I think it was 1894 when the, what we call the Cross J Bar, and that's our main corporation brand. My grandpa bought that. Started out with, had a few cows, but basically run sheep up until mid 40s, then introduced Angus cattle. And basically, we've been straight Angus since then. Gilbert Angus Ranch was a pretty typically managed ranch for this area. It's big country, big pastures, typically season-long grazing. In 85, my dad started the rotational grazing. It's been a great deal for our ranch. Uh, we've tweaked it a little over the years. Uh, most recently worked to a twice-over system, and it sure seems to be the, the best for us. With our rotational grazing, we move the cows a lot when we move between pastures. It's on a rotation, and so it's, it's scheduled. You have it planned out when you're going to move the cattle on what days. We just leave them in a pasture so they eat some of the grass, but leave enough for the winter and the next year. Then we rotate them to the next pasture, and we'll go over a rotation twice in the summer. And it's a nice opportunity to get your horses out and let them see the cattle, and you get to watch your cattle a lot. Um, you catch, catch anything that ever has foot rot or ever gets sick, you catch them right away because you're moving them a lot and you get to see the country and how the grass is doing. It is helping our grasses diversify and, and get so much thicker. And we have quite a diversity of, of grasses. Buffalo grass is our main grass probably, a lot of blue grama. We had a lot of prairie sand reed and by doing a little research, we found that we could really hit that hard in the spring, get some good use out of it. Through trial and error, constantly tweaking, constantly studying the grasses, monitoring, we sort of developed a system that worked for us. We started with cow-calf and bringing in lots of yearlings, and we ran our cows on one system, we ran yearlings on another. Pretty soon, we were running more yearlings and we were still adding to our cows. I truly believe financially it saved us. Had we continued the same practices which were not sustainable, I don't believe we would be here today. So on this rotational grazing, we move these cattle. It's a twice over system. Um, most uh, systems are six to eight pastures. Depends a little bit on the size of the pasture, but uh, you know, 10 days, two weeks, first time through, something like that. About twice as long, roughly, on the second time through. We run three different systems here, so there's quite a little cow moving, but you know, our cattle are, are used to being handled and, and handled horseback. It's actually more of a fun day than anything else. It's not a lot of work. That's what we do is move cattle and raise cattle and. If you don't enjoy going out and seeing the cattle, we're probably in the wrong business anyway. In each system, uh, we run anywhere from 350 to over 400 head to a system. We have three systems that we run through. We found that uh, by going to the twice over, uh, we eliminated some fences. We made some of the pastures bigger. We put six, seven miles of pipeline. We put in 20 miles of electric fence. Uh, we dug a well. The antelope and the deer certainly are a big fan of the fresh water that we do through the pipelines. We will see antelope walk through a muddy dugout and they'll go to a tank and drink, and it's because of the fresh water. Well, it's the same thing with, with raptors, and it's the same thing with other birds, other different types of birds. So. We're pretty blessed that we see the fruits of our labors, so to speak. We see what happens when you change that environment a little bit. We don't sell cattle, we sell grass. And when we sell our calves or our cows, they have harvested this amazing resource that is utilized to the best for both the animal and the actual resource. You have to take care of that resource. You have to constantly monitor that resource to make sure that it's working and it's sustainable. The most important thing we can show people is that nature can sustain itself if we will work with it and not against it. And that we have to have 
these areas where we have cattle or we have sheep in order to feed the world. But we can feed it without disturbing the soil and without creating problems and we can do it in a natural way. It's so important that we respect nature.